Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Stampin' Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and I'm so excited to have all of you here with me this evening from all over the U.S. and all over the world. So we got some snow today. Yesterday it was like 57 degrees. Today we've got snow. Uh, Wisconsin has a real problem deciding what it is this time of the year, whether it's spring or it's winter. Uh, so uh, for those of you that are having snow right now, I feel you, I feel for you, but it's not that far away before all the snow will be gone. So I wanted to just say a special shout out to all of you who left so many nice comments for me regarding my little procedure that I had. Things went very well and I am back among the living and eating and uh, it went well, I survived. Um, so, but I do apologize because I have a terrible bruise on my hand. Um, and I didn't even realize I had this bruise on my hand until one minute ago. I looked down and I said, oh my gosh, Tom, look at this bruise on my hand. It looks so much worse under these lights. I guess everything is so magnified under these uh, crazy white lights. So I apologize for that. I will get a glove and cut the fingers off and hide this thing until it gets better. Um, they had a lot of trouble getting an IV in me and they ended up putting it here. And now I have a bruise here. Too, so. Pride. All right. I'll wear it with pride. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for that thumbs down, whoever gave me that. <laughs> Someone gave me a thumbs down before I started. That's good for the morale, huh? <laughs> I don't care. It's all any interaction is good interaction. But if you are joining me on YouTube and you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up later if you like it, and if you like my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you never miss another video. So tonight we're gonna do something really fun. We are going to do the black magic technique. Now I've done this a couple of times in my regular YouTube videos. I don't know if I've done it in a live, but um, it's a lot of fun to do. And I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks on how to get it to look good and how to add a little bit of depth into your images. So the stamp set that I'm going to use today is this one. This was an incentive stamp last month or two months ago. I'm starting to lose track. But uh, this, this stamp set is called Better Together. Let's flip over to the overhead here and I'll have you take a look at it. And I used this not that long ago with uh, blue ink. So you can see my stamp set is very stained in blue. Um, and so I'm going to be using this tonight. And I'm also going to be using some white pigment ink. Now, if you haven't used pigment ink before, pigment ink can be a little messy. I've used pigment inks in the past that never dried. And that's really frustrating. So one thing I want to tell you about our pigment ink is if you just let it sit for a few minutes, it will dry. If you want to speed it up and you're not patient, just use your heat tool and that'll get it going even faster. So I'm going to start by getting this large image. So this technique's going to take me a little while. So maybe we'll find something fun and non-medical to talk about tonight. All right, so you can see this stamp is really stained because I really went at it with my uh, with my blue ink. Um, now for black magic, you can use black cardstock like I'm going to use tonight, or you can use any dark color, maybe charcoal brown, dark chocolate, even in the navy it looks really beautiful with the black magic technique. You can also use deep um like reds, like wine reds, deep burgundy, um, anything like that. But black is my favorite to use, so I'm going to be using black. And I did check this stamp to make sure that it wasn't going to uh, transfer that blue onto my white ink pad. And so far, so good. It looks pretty good. Um, and I wanted to tell you how I clean my stamp after using pigment ink. That it, it's such a mess, pigment ink. I don't even go with the tidy towel. I don't do any of that. What I do is I just take this whole thing right on the acrylic block and I take it to the sink and I take an old toothbrush with some dishwashing detergent. I run it under warm water and I just scrub the whole thing. All of the pigment ink will come off. It'll be nice and clean and very easy to then just pat dry and put back on your stamp sheet. So don't even try with the tidy towel or anything like that. Just go and scrub it with an old toothbrush. Don't use your husband's toothbrush, right, Tom? Again. <laughs> Again, don't use your... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't know it was yours. <laughs> I 
It just happens sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to start by I'm inking this. With the tidy towel. <laughs> Did you try the tidy towel on your teeth? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use this pigment ink. And pigment ink is an opaque ink, unlike dye ink. So they really don't make a white dye ink that I'm aware of because you need it to be uh, solid and opaque in order for it to show up on your dark cardstock. So I'm going to stamp that right up here like this. I'm gonna give it a second to transfer. And you can see it's such a nice bright white ink. I really love our white. Beautiful for snowflakes and um, you know anything that you want a nice white base on, a nice white background, be beautiful on your rubber background stamps. And I'm gonna stamp this one in the opposite direction, just like this. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna put that one aside and I'm gonna stamp one more just because I like to just let them sit for a little bit and dry. So I'm gonna do another one. Sometimes it takes one or two tries to really get your, um, you know, get it exactly the way you want it. But again, just give that ink a chance to transfer to the cardstock. You can see that's nice and white. Now the reason we're stamping this in white is because and I always stamp too, and I'll, t I'll show you why in a second. Okay. The reason, um, the reason you wanna use white underneath is because we're gonna be coloring these flowers with colored pencils. And colored pencils aren't gonna show up very well on black cardstock. Now the reason why, let's get this other one. Okay. So we just needed it to dry for a minute. Now, of course you can, as it starts to dry, it gets just a little bit paler, but you can also, um, you can just let these air dry, just do a whole bunch of them. You can use your heat tool. And if you want it a brighter white, use your Misty and just stamp it more than one time and it will get really, really bright white. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, Lori, you just watched a Black Magic video of mine. Cool, that's awesome. I do have a couple uh, black magic videos and I also have a craft magic video where I do this on craft and that's really pretty too. So I just pulled a bunch of my favorite Prismacolor pencils and you can see the colors that I picked. Now, some of these colors may not be colors that you would use very often. Like, you know, maybe this green isn't a green that you would use for leaves. But for the black magic technique, it's gonna be a perfect green because you wanna use bright, vibrant colors. So I have another one here and I like to have one that I use as my tester for colors. I like to see what the color is gonna look like before I make the commitment here on my card. So I recommend when you're coloring an image like that that has a lot of these little fine details in here, um, that you want to keep your pencils nice and sharp. Patty, I am using wax-based pencils, so Prismacolor pencils, not watercolor pencils. I'm not sure how watercolors would show up. You can always try it, but I like the wax pencils for this technique. So I'm using my iPoint Orbit pencil sharpener, and this one's battery operated. Um, it's great for, you know, when you're just traveling around. I've been meaning to show you guys the other one. Let me grab it real quick. If I have it here, yes I do. So this is the electric one. You can see it's a much bigger pencil sharpener. I got a backup so you can see it because it's much bigger. This is the one my friend Karen Hightower sent me as a gift. She saw it at Costco and uh, loved the color and sent it to me, which, which I'm, I love it so much. And here's the battery operated one. So it's smaller. So this is really my travel one, or I use it in places where I don't have electricity, like I'm sitting on the couch or something and I want to color. And this is the one that I will plug in and use when I'm just sitting somewhere like at my counter in my kitchen or something. I can plug it right into my island or on the counter wall. So uh, I love it. It's a great, great tool. Now, um, it just, it does a really good job of um, sharpening your pencils without breaking the points. So here are two Prismacolor pencils that I like to use this 
for this technique. Brenda, our white pigment ink is not in stock. I did not know that. I'm so sorry. Um, if it's not in stock right now, it will be in stock soon because we do have a big order of ink that's supposed to be coming in soon. I, do we not have the ink cubes? Because the ink cubes work really well too. Check and see if we have it in the ink cube because then at least you can get started and you'll have a great white ink. And that's always great for those small images because pigment ink is so um, kind of messy and thick that it makes stamping smaller images. I'll use mine for the greeting a little bit later. I just had to pull it out of the drawer. Okay, so I have two colors here. This is called uh, light green and this is called true green. Oh my goodness. I wanna color both of these onto some of these little sprigs and leaves so that you can see the difference in the color. So I'm gonna zoom in just a hair more to make sure that you guys can see pretty well without getting blurry. Tom, does that look blurry at all? It does not. Oh, good. Okay, so I'll just practice a little bit here and show you the two different colors. So here is the first green, and I'm not doing anything fancy with this at all. I'm just coloring in, but look at how beautiful and vibrant that looks over white. Now, you know, if you color it over black, it doesn't, it doesn't look green. It looks much paler. You see that? But look how bright the green looks when you color it over the white ink. So that is, this one is the light green. Now let's look at the true green and see which color we like better. They're very close, but the true green is a little greener. All right, I'm gonna just blow the excess away. There we go. You can really see how, you know, it, it kind of flakes off when you press a little bit hard on your pencils and that's okay, you just sharpen it up again. So can you see the difference in those two colors? Does that show much of a difference, Tom? Tom's monitoring. So this one is a little bit more green. This one is a little more whitish green, almost yes, more yes, minty. Yeah. This has a hair more yellow in it. I think I like the one with a hair more yellow. True green, yes, y'all are saying true green. I agree. So true green will be the green that I use. So that's why I like to always stamp too. And you can just keep this to test other, other colors for other designs. It's really just to see what it looks like against the white. So does, color smear? does it smear? No, it doesn't smear because it's just like coloring on, um, you know, with regular colored pencils on your cardstock. It won't smear, but you can see I'm pressing hard. So it looks like it looks like it's chalky, but once that color's down, it's not going anywhere. So again, you know, this is going to just take me a little while to color this whole thing, but I know you guys are patient and uh, we'll figure out things to talk about. Plus, if you have any questions about anything, and it doesn't have to be even stamping related, I'm happy to answer any questions. Now, if you get a little bit somewhere that you don't want it like that, because I instead of blowing it away there, I brushed it away. So you can always use your, um, your mono sand eraser to just erase anything that gets in a spot that you don't want it. All right. So you'll see me sharpening my pencils a lot for this technique. I wouldn't use Gamsol for this just because the Gamsol might smear everything and it'll go kind of outside the lines and you'll be able to see all of that. So this is kind of a different type of technique. We're not going for as much of a blended look, although I do have a little uh, technique to show you when, when it comes to adding a little bit of depth. So we'll do that on the flowers, maybe on the leaves, we'll see. So you can see, I already feel like my um, pencil is getting just a little dull, so I wanna sharpen it up just a hair more. I put my pencil sharpener right in the way and I think it cast a shadow there, so hopefully. And what's kind of cool about this is it almost looks like you drew this yourself, you know, with colored pencils because it's a solid image. It doesn't have any lines around the outside. Now, Tom had a great suggestion today after I told him what I was going to do. And I colored a little bit of these colors just on the black, just to see what colors I wanted to use tonight. And um, he said, you know, it'd be really cool with the new kit and also with Lisa Hetrick's new set. There's some flowers in both of those that have outlines. 
So he thought it would be really cool after doing the black magic to go back over it with the line art version of the stamp and then emboss the outside with gold or silver or white. Um, and I thought that was a great idea, but I was already committed to this design tonight. So um, we're not going to do that. Maybe we'll do that in another video. In fact, maybe we'll do that in a video with you, Tom, since it was your idea. All right. You need to come back on the show. I think everybody likes having you. Right, guys? Let's give Tom a little encouragement. <laughs> okay, so I went a little outside the lines there, and that's going to happen now and then. I could erase it, or I could just make it look like the design, like I did by going nice and dark on it. Um, and you can, you can do more than one layer. This is the kind of technique that, I find to be very relaxing to do. And I like to, um, to just stamp a whole bunch of these, let them dry. And then you could take this and a handful of bright colored pencils and just sit while you're listening to television right in the living room, you know, makes it nice to have something to do that doesn't require a whole lot of like unbelievably perfect lighting for blending and all of that. We're not really doing much blending. So I like this color green, and you can see how this is coming. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to keep going. So I don't know if you guys are on Facebook. Probably a lot of you are on Facebook. But um, for those of you that are not on Facebook and you watch me on YouTube, I'm going to tell a story that I shared over on Facebook. And if you've already seen it, just bear with me. So I was really impressed, first of all. I, um, my doctor for my procedure, I'm just going to call it the procedure. Um, and I'll just mention it was a colonoscopy just so anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about. And then we won't talk about it like that anymore. But for the procedure, um, my doctor was a woman and I thought that was just the coolest thing. You know, I, I, I felt very comfortable because it's not exactly the most, you know, it's not like getting your eyes examined, you know? <laughs> You can't look back. <laughs> um, so, um, and then my anesthesiologist was a woman and all my nurses were women. And so I thought, okay, I just had a feeling with all these women around me that everybody was going to have a good sense of humor. So I'm laying there and they said to me, okay, miss, you have to give us your first and last name again and your date of birth. So I said, okay, my name is Gina Krupski and my birthday is blah, blah, blah. And they said, okay, very good. And I know this sounds really stupid, the nurse said, but I have to ask you so that you can say this in front of everybody in your own words, what procedure do you think that you're having done today? And I said, a facelift. And boy, did I wake up disappointed because <laughs> I had the same face. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't get the facelift, but um, they did laugh. They thought that that was kind of funny. Of course, you know, I I thought about it and I thought, if I say this, are they going to be able to do the procedure? Because, you know, there's that part in the wedding where they say, if anybody objects to the marriage of these two people, speak now or forever hold your peace. Well, I heard that if somebody like says, I object, even if they're joking, they can't get married. Have you heard that, Tom? I haven't heard that. But... I heard that that's the case. And I thought, oh my gosh, if I say a facelift being funny and they're like, well, that's it. Sorry, we can't do it. You're not of sound mind. All that prep for nothing, but you, you know. You can still have the reception though. You can still have the reception. That's the, the fun part anyway, right? <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I took a chance though. I, I had to, you know, you got to do it for the joke. Okay. So how do you guys like this so far? Do you like this color? I'm finding it to be very, um, very bright and vibrant. So I tried some darker colors and I found that they just didn't show up as well. You could see them, but there's something about how bright and vibrant that green looks that really, really makes a difference. Yep, so we stamped it first with white pigment ink, if you're just tuning in. 
And now we're doing the black magic technique. So we're doing this obviously on black cardstock, but you can use any dark colored cardstock or deep colored cardstock, I should say. Like our cranberry tart would be very pretty, you know, something like that, or um, navy, dark chocolate, any of the, the dark colors. And then it just brings up this color so beautifully. This is also a great technique if you want to color solid images on craft cardstock. I find that to be beautiful. And I do have a video on that on my YouTube channel. It's called Craft Magic. So there is a way to search a particular channel. You go to the channel and then you search. There's like a search tab for the channel. But if you're ever looking for one of my videos and you, you know, can't find the search on my particular channel, type in the name of the technique, like Black Magic or Craft Magic, and then add Gina K to it or Stamp TV, and it will come up. You'll be able to find it then. And I, I just realized I was looking at my channel and I realized that there is well over 800 videos on there. Tom, we've done over 800 videos. And when we first started doing our videos, do you know Tom edited every single video? So, cause they were all two camera shoots and I'm very intimidated to edit those types of videos. And Tom is not, he just jumped right in and took the, grabbed the reins. So. so if you have any questions or you have anything that you would like to mention that you would like shout it out, I'd be happy to do that. I have to look up once in a while and see your comments. The color doesn't seem very bright. Hmm, well, it looks pretty bright here. One thing I will say that um, I always take pictures of my cards when I'm done and I always post them on Facebook in our Facebook group and then I post them on YouTube on my community tab. So you just go to my YouTube channel and at the top of the channel, you know, everybody's YouTube channel kind of looks like a website where there's different things that you can click on. And there's one that says community. And I always post my pictures of all the cards I make. I started doing that and it's it's been good. People have liked being able to see the photos because of course, you know, depending on your monitor, sometimes videos just aren't as vibrant as they might be. We monitor everything using an iPhone and um, and a monitor. So we try to make sure that it's bright enough and clear enough that you can see and hear everything. Um, but again, if you're using something different, maybe your monitor is set a little bit dark, it might not show up as well. So check out those pictures on the community tab on YouTube and also in our Facebook group. And if you're not a member of our Facebook group, it's a really fun place. We are getting really close to 30,000 members there. Such a fun group, such a supportive group. So we love crafters of all levels. If you're a brand new crafter, come join us, share your stuff. You'll get lots of support. Um, and also for very experienced stampers, we love to see your more intricate designs as well. I put myself somewhere in the middle. Because you guys, man, the stuff that you do blows my mind. You're so good. So let me see what else is happening in the world. We've got snow. My procedure's done. I didn't get a facelift. Kind of mad, but whatever. I'll live. Okay, so now I have the green done. Let me pull it up a little bit closer. Hopefully you guys can see. <laughs> All right, very fun. The color pencil that I'm using right now is True Green. And I did do a little test with this one, Light Green. I didn't like it as much. You can definitely see the difference. The Light Green is not as vibrant. It's not as green. It's vibrant, but it's not as green. So now I'm going to pick a color for the flowers. And you know, guys, that there are some beautiful colors here. I'll tell you what I already know I'm gonna want, but I will show you how a couple of these colors look. So orange is a really good color. This one is called Pale Vermilion, and it's a good color, shows up really nicely against the white. You can see that, right? That's a good one. 
I don't want to use this one, but I wanted to show you it's a good color in case you're collecting pencils in your stash right now to play with this technique that you can see a couple colors. Another one that is really a good color that I like is this one. This is called Pink. Come on, be more creative with the name Pink. Pink, come on. You need to call it something with food like all of my colors. When I stamp, I, I'm hungry all the time because there's fresh asparagus and then there's tangerine twist and dark chocolate. And that you missed a leaf. I did, I missed, oh, I did miss a leaf. Thank you, I will fix that, thank you. <laughs> so that's what the pink looks like. Let me pull this up a little bit closer. That's pretty too, can you see that? All right. Now I'm gonna show you one color that I love and I didn't expect to love this so much and this is called Blue Lace. It's very similar to, I don't know if any of you guys have any crystals, the little rocks, but this is, this is almost the exact color of Blue Lace Agate. So I understand why they named it that. It's a beautiful color. Now let me color a little bit of this. This actually glows, this color is so pretty. So let me color this and then I'll bring it up a little bit closer to the camera and you can see. Look at how glowy that is. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, thank you. I'm gonna fix that right now so everybody can not be so nervous about it. Um, I'll fix it right now. Thank you. I did miss a leaf. <laughs> All right, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And it's funny because most people, after they see the pictures on Facebook and YouTube, they're like, oh my gosh, that looks so vibrant and nice. But this is the one I'm gonna go with, guys. Of course, what does this say? This says Light Aqua. And this one is the most vibrant. I love this color. This is glowy. And then I have a darker version of this that I'm gonna use to throw in a little bit of shading. And I actually think these two colors together look really pretty, so check that out. Isn't that beautiful? I love that one. Okay. Um, I don't, I've never used, Robin, I've never used Thornton's uh, colored pencils before, but if they're a wax-based pencil and not a watercolor pencil, they will work beautifully. So go ahead and give it a try. You can always, you know, just keep in mind when, when you have something like this, it only costs a quarter of a sheet of paper to try. And that's why I always do one extra one. So I can do all my testing on this and I can keep this for other ones too, if I wanna test other colors. Okay, so we're going with this one. This is the Light Aqua. Love that color. And what's really neat is you don't necessarily always go right to the very edge of the petal. And so it almost looks a little bit outlined in white. And I don't know, it's just kind of gives it that little bit of extra vibrance around the edge. So I would try the Thorntons and if it works and you make a card, share it and let us know what you used. I'm, I'm always interested to know like what kinds of colored pencils or what kinds of markers people use. I don't have colored pencils or markers in my line. And so, you know, we we like them all. And it's always nice to see a sample before you make the commitment to try a new pencil. I know that the Karen Dosh pencils will work if you have those. Also, uh, the Faber-Castell ones. I can't think of what they're called. Somebody tell me what the Faber-Castell pencils are called. I know you guys know polychromos. That's what it is. My brain just snapped on. <laughs> One of the tabs must have closed and made room for another tab to open. <laughs> is that what your brain feels like too? Like there's 12,000 tabs open and I saw a funny, funny thing where it said, my brain is like there's 31 tabs open and there's music playing and I don't know where it's coming from. Isn't that what, <laughs> what life is like in your brain most days? <laughs> Where's the music coming from? Okay. I had one of those days today where I got up and I looked at myself in the mirror and 
it was not a good experience, you know, just not, not a happy moment for me. Okay, I'm gonna color these two little things right here like this. And then I'm gonna go with that deeper blue, this one here, this lace, blue lace. Cause I really like this color and I feel like having that second color in there in this flower is just the bomb, gotta do it. So I put a headband on and I went to work. Everybody was so nice. They were like cute headband. Nobody made gagging sounds when they saw me, but I realized I was being kind of rough on myself this morning. Um, and I'm sure we're all like that. So I have a little quote about that because we all have our days where we look in the mirror and we're like, nope, not today. Not today. It's not happening. I just can't seem to make it work. And that was today was that day for me. I came home and started from scratch for the live tonight. I had to just just reprimp. Primp? Is that the word? <laughs> Primp. <laughs> I almost said something else and that wouldn't have been good. All right, so I am continuing the color here and I appreciate your patience with how long it's taking for me to color, but really this card at the end, I'm hoping it's gonna be worth it because these colors are so pretty. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, Amy. I, I, I am hard on myself, I guess, but we all are, right? Isn't that what we kind of do to ourselves? It's just, you know. I, I, I hear a lot that, you know, getting old is tough, but it's better than the alternative. So I'm going with that today. Still bitter that I didn't get that facelift. <laughs> and I thought, I thought they would give me, you know, I was what I expected. That's what they asked. <laughs> okay. So this is coming along nicely. I'm going to show you how to add a little bit of shading to this flower. And if you see that I miss anything, please let me know. Ooh. Again, with my mono sand eraser, just to get that off of where I don't want it. Okay. All right, pretty good. We're getting there pretty good. I'm gonna add these two here. Probably should have done those in the uh, blue lace, but I didn't. And so now I'm kind of stuck with that idea, but I love this. Maybe I'll do this other flower with this color. You want to see yellow on the other. Oh, you want to see yellow? Oh, on the other card to see what yellow looks like? Okay, so I don't have a yellow because I did try a little bit of yellow, but let me grab my pencils. There's got to be a yellow in here. Here's a yellowy orange and here's a yellow. Okay, so this yellow, this one is called, oh my goodness, what is this called? Tom, what does that say? Brown. Brown? No. Okay. <laughs> See, I believed him because that's how Prismacolor is. Eggshell. Eggshell, and then tell me what these two are. So here's eggshell. This is a yellowy white, and this one has, it looks like buttercream. That's what I would have named this color because it looks like butter. Sunburst yellow, yellowed orange. Okay, so is the darker one yellowed orange? Yes. Okay. So that is eggshell. And then sunburst yellow is this one. So this is a little bit darker yellow. But see, I just, I felt like I wasn't getting it as vibrant as I wanted it to be. Maybe if I colored this over the eggshell, it would be better. It's pretty. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty. So that's that. And I'll hold it up closer. And then this is the yellowed orange, orange, I would say orange, orange. That's my, that's my East coast coming out. It's orange. It's also Florida, not Florida. I gotta learn, I gotta fix that. That gives me away of where I was born and raised. Okay, so you can see these when I hold it up here a little more, eggshell, yellowed orange and sunburst yellow. So it's good to see what they look like. And that's why I say make a tester one so you can try the colors out because a color like this, I mean, I would have thought that would have been really vibrant. And that is the quietest one in that flower. It's not supposed to be real vibrant. 
You don't think? Well, I don't know. I think it should be vibrant. It's kind of muted. You think it's muted? I think it's pretty. I mean, compared to most of the Com cards you do that are like grabbing you by the throat. That's true. It's it doesn't grab <laughs> it doesn't grab you by the throat. Oh, I love that color. Oh, I love that color. This kind of feels. You're very welcome, Don. This kind of feels like. Um, this color feels a little bit like a softer version of Wild Wisteria. It's just a beautiful periwinkle. And this one is called Blue Lace. How did I forget that? Oh my gosh. It's the tabs, I'm telling you, too many of them. So you've got that aqua and that deeper blue together. This looks like that, um, the kind of uh, furniture. I have this beautiful desk that my parents bought from it was i think they bought it in japan and what is going on it's like an airport do you guys hear that that's a plane flying overhead people are just flying out of town um so it, it was a beautiful um desk that my mom and dad bought in japan and i believe the style of painting on it is called cloisonne does that sound right um it has another name too, and I'm trying to think of what it's called, but it is, it looks like this. It's black lacquer, and then it's got all of this beautiful, um, you know, painting, painted flowers in these bright, vibrant colors. So those colors look really rich, but if you color them just straight away on black, there's the blue, blue lace, and here is the uh, light aqua. They don't look anywhere near as vibrant as they do when you put it over white. The white really, really brings it out. Cloisonne is correct. Thank you, Sherry. Yeah, you have jets flying overhead all the time. No jets during lockdown. Yeah, there was not much going on during lockdown, that's for sure. Okay, so here is my finished little card here. Now I want to add just a little bit of shading. So I did pull this color. This is aquamarine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a nice sharp point on this. And of course, those of you that are uh, colorists and know what you're doing, you're going to do this way better than I'm going to do it right now. But for those of you that are new or you don't feel as skilled with coloring, I'm your girl. All right. So <laughs> what we're going to do is we're just going to do some, some lines like this, and we're gonna follow the shape of the flower. Can you see that? Now let me bring that closer so that you can see that. How does that look, Tom? Can you see that on that petal at all? Not so much. Not so much, okay. All right, I'm gonna finish it though because when I take the picture, you're gonna be able to see it. I'm putting these really thin hair lines in it just to create some depth. And I will take a close-up picture of this. Maybe I'll take the picture on an angle so that you can oh, really can see it. Can okay. And you want to keep that point really sharp for this. And we're just kind of going in the shape of the petal of the flower. My my flower is getting a little dull. I mean, my pencil is getting dull, not my flower. My flower is looking good, not dull. All right, and. And it's a little hard to get it to do that because I have burnished this color on here. You know, I've over colored, so it's really waxy, but you can probably see that it just gives that little bit of texture. This color is called Aqua Marine. Yeah, very subtle. Yes, Krista, it does remind you of that velvet painting. That's for sure. Oh, that was fun. I remember like velvet painting when I was a kid. I haven't done anything like that in a while. And again, uh, you don't have to be a fancy artist to be able to do this, but if you are, it will look better <laughs> than this, <laughs> which is really true. Um, but it's kind of a nice way because it's a solid image, so there's not much going on in it, but I'm kind of following the line pattern of the way it's coming out of the petal right there, those little black lines, whatever direction they're going in, I'm trying, trying to follow that. So. Do a couple more over here. Okay. 
And then I'd like to do a little on this, but I don't have a darker purple out. So uh, let's see. Let me just see what it looks like on here on my tester. If Oh, that's pretty. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to use this same color on the purple. Of course, if you have a darker purple, you can certainly use it. And then, you know, you can get creative, just kind of going down near the end. You can even just color real close to the end if you want like that. And that just gives it like a little shaded look. I like that. That doesn't require as much flicking and skill. There's a little skill to the flick, but not much. <laughs> okay. You okay, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> You're just breathing? Who told you you could breathe over there? Velvet Elvis. What's that? Velvet Elvis. Oh my gosh, back in the day, the Velvet Elvis. All right, so that's what that looks like. The name of this pencil sharpener is called the Eye Point Orbit Pad. Yes, Velvet Dogs Playing Cards. Oh my gosh, now we're going back. We're going back. Grab, grab me. We're going back. Now you could add another color. Here is pa Parrot Green. I almost said Patriot Green. That doesn't make sense. Parrot Green. And if you wanted to get real fancy, you know, you could maybe color a little bit of that down near the bottom of each of the leaves. So we'll do that real quick just to add a little bit here. Ooh, that's pretty. I like that. Now it's looking really good to me, but I don't. I need new glasses, so um, <laughs> it might not look as good. It's like I'm always looking through a filter. Everybody's skin looks really good. I can't see. That's that's the truth. I, I just I can't see. <laughs> Diane wants to know if you ever embarrass me. Do I ever embarrass Tom? Mm. Oh, Tom, that sounds like a question for you. Do I ever embarrass you? Most of the time, you don't have to. <laughs> Why you take care of that yourself? <laughs> yeah, Tom does a good job of taking care of that all on his own. <laughs> oh, I'm just being silly. Of course I embarrass him. That's like, it's, well, you guys know you're here, right? You, you can feel it. You've seen Tom in Alive. I, I try my best at least three or four times a day. So I like this adding this little darker green. This is parrot green. You can see I'm just kind of adding it. Let me let me pull it up so that you can see here how that looks. You see that? That just gives you a little bit more. The shading really just brings it to life. And it's it's not it's not difficult shading because if it was I wouldn't be able to do it. So I know you guys can do this. Anybody can do this. Just practice a tiny little bit on, you know, the one that you're trying out all the colors on just to make sure you like the colors that you're using and to see how the shading looks. All right, we'll do this side and then we're gonna turn this into a card. I know I've been coloring forever and I, I appreciate you guys <laughs> hanging in there with me on this because this has been quite the, uh, quite the long card the long coloring tutorial here. So any other questions for Tom? I'm sure you guys must have questions for Tom. He doesn't share as much as I do. I uh, I share everything. I'm an oversharer and I, I have the unsubscribers to prove it. <laughs> Don't leave, stay with me. Uh, I'm on troll patrol. Oh, you're on troll patrol over there? Do we have trolls? Oh, Why do we have trolls? Scared. Are they bad tonight? Must have got their stimulus checks tonight. <laughs> <laughs> this trolls got their stimulus checks. Yay! Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, this is my favorite part. I think I didn't expect to even want to do this, and now I'm loving this color. And you can see that I am not putting much effort into this at all. Um which is what you want to hear when you tune into a YouTube video. <laughs> Not put much effort in tonight, guys. No, it's just that it doesn't take much effort to make it look good. That's the story right there. 
Does wow. Tom dye his hair? Tom, do you dye your hair? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, answer. Not gonna answer? Oh, you're working oh, on trolls? I'm working on All right. Something. No, Tom does not dye his hair. He does not. It is his natural color. He's got he's got good genes as far as uh, the gray going on. He just, I mean, I think gray hair is very elegant on a man. I like the way it looks, um, but Tom just isn't there yet. He's got a few little grays here and there, but I remember your grandfather still had dark hair. My dad still had some dark hair and I don't know where he got that because I started graying at 18. But I'll tell you what, I think kids made me gray. They definitely made me gray. So I would have had beautiful hair. I feel like it needs just a little shading in there. I'm going back with this dark pencil, this aquamarine, and I'm gonna shade just a little bit in here. You might like that, just down at the bottom. All right, enough. Enough, put it away. Okay, so now we're gonna make a greeting. So I need one more piece of black cardstock. Now, since I used, um, since I used black and we did this whole, um, you know, cloisonne look, black magic, I'm gonna do my greeting in black too because I feel like it all needs to tie together. So I'm definitely going to use this greeting here. You're always on my mind. And I like that, that's a nice one to send to a friend. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to emboss this, but I'm going to emboss it using the, uh, the white pigment ink. And you can use your pigment ink pad in place of Versamark. I wouldn't do it for gold or silver as much, but you can definitely do it for white. And it, um, it allows you to, I don't know, gives a little bit more white in there. So I'm going to use the ink cube for this, like I said, and I'm going to ink that up. Yes, we've been married for 35 years and Tom isn't gray. What the heck? It seems the wheels are coming off. No. The wheels are coming off? I don't know. I don't know. You're, you're in good shape. You're strong. You're healthy. I love it. And you're putting up with me. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay. So, ugh, I globbed there. I'm gonna do one more. I just, I should have gone down just a little bit further. You know what it is? See, it wasn't a bad um, stamp thing. There's a little piece of something that got onto my stamp and I'm gonna pull that off of there. A little fuzzy of some sort. Why am I just doing it this way and not just touching it? I guess I'll just touch it and get ink all over me. Okay. All right, here we go. Round two. Oh, I hope I have enough room for my dye. I will. I'm going to think positively. I will positively have enough room for my dye. Okay. Give it a second to transfer. And then we're going to use the white embossing powder on top of that. There we go. Look how white that is. I kind of like the white on white. I think it's better than the embossing ink when you're doing white because it just fills in all the little cracks. And I'm using the Gina K Designs um, Fine Detail White Powder. Was it a gray hair? Yeah, it was probably one of my gray hairs, Anne. <laughs> it's Tom's gray hair. Oh, that's funny. No, no gray hair over there. It's really annoying. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. White on white is the ticket with white. All right, everybody. Get yourself a white ink cube. Look at that. Beautiful white embossing. So vibrant. <sighs> yeah. No gray hair. Come on. Okay, so let's get the die cutting machine out. I got to run across the room here. We have been packing boxes like crazy, moving everything. Tom has been moving stuff. He's getting his work out every day. I've been the one packing the boxes and he's the one moving them all for our new location. Okay, so this, gosh, I hate to cut this. 
but I think I'm going to cut it bigger than I usually do. I'm going to use the Master Layouts 1 for this. So I'm going to use, it's, it's opposite, because you guys know I always like the little outline to be black. Well, I'm going to have to make the outline white this time. Let's see if I can get most of this in. I think I can. Okay. This is like almost cut to the right size. So let's see how it goes. Ooh, nerve wracking. I just, I don't want to lose any of it because it's very pretty. So hopefully this will work. If it doesn't work, we'll have to go down a size. Ugh, crunch. Yes, we're Vicki, we're only moving 10 minutes away from where we were before. It's just a bigger location. I don't know. That That's worrying me a bit. I don't know. That might dip in a little. We'll have to see. Maybe it was right on the line. We could get lucky. I see a little bit of a curve. So let's see what it looks like when we do a white piece. Yeah, we're only going to be 10 minutes away from the location that we're at now. Um, we just needed more space. And um, we're going to be adding some new things to our business, like subscriptions for people that love to get that little something every month in the mail. A little surprise kind of little kit. Um, and lots of other things. So I'm excited to share all that as we get closer. Okay. It's a good thing this doesn't smear. It's not like chalk because it's colored pencil, so it's not going to smear. And I feel like, yeah, see, I don't know. Well, that's not bad. You guys could live with that, right? I can live with that. If I can live with it, we can all live with that, right? We're going to live with it. Okay, that looks good. Now we're going to cut this one out. That was Master Layouts 1 we used. It really is, the, the master layout sets are really, really, really useful. I use them all the time. We're going to use master layouts three to cut this greeting out. We're going to cut this using the stitched circle. Oh, plenty of room. Remember I was nervous? I don't have to be nervous. That worked out really well. Okay. Where'd my, oh, see, I hate when I do that. Get it all lined up perfectly, and then the plate. You guys do that, right? You're like, okay, perfect. Where's the plate? And it's underneath. For crying out loud. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> this will have that nice little stitched edge that you guys might not be able to see, but you'll be able to see it in the photo, I believe. Okay. And don't worry about, like, making sure that this is straight when you cut it because it's a circle, and if you cut it a little crooked, you just turn it. It's a circle. And then we're going to cut the larger one using white cardstock. So I have this same piece of white. Um, they, you know, they're, they're a little bent. Somebody asked if my dies don't get bent. They're a little bent, not bent that you can't use them. They kind of are flexible and they get a little bent as you use them, but they cut perfectly. So don't worry if they get a little bent. They're really big and open, and that just happens with big open dies. But as long as you don't get a crease in it, then you won't have a problem with it being a little bit bent. I'll show you what I mean. So, you know, with this die here, let me show you this one. You guys see me use this all the time. You see how it gets a little bowed? But, you know, it'll it'll straighten right out. And when you run it through the die cutting machine, it cuts perfectly and it's all flattened out. So don't worry if some of your bigger, more open dies get a little bowed. That's normal and that's, that's not a defect. Okay, so we're back to this now. Now, what color card base? I feel like a really light aqua would be appropriate because you don't wanna go too dark. If you go too dark, it's gonna take away from all the darkness of that. So let's go with a really light color like sea glass. Who folded this card? Look at this. What is that? I don't get it. Get rid of that. Okay. <laughs> Here's another one. <laughs> okay. Here we go. This one's folded better. Oh my goodness. So this is the color that I think is good with these colors. And let me grab my tape runner and we will assemble this card. 
Um, are we going to do a master layouts for five by seven? You know, I haven't given five by seven any thought because I don't, I haven't made five by seven cards, but that is definitely something to put on the kick around list and, um, you know, see if that might be a good one. I know that a lot of our friends overseas like to make bigger cards. In the USA, we like to make these little four and a quarter by five and a half cards. But I think over in the UK, you guys like to make five by sevens, don't you? All right. So that is a very pretty combination. I'm going to put that together. <laughs> I could put a small strip inside. Yes. Like, like across the center of a contrasting color. Oh, for sure. And I think that would be really pretty too, if you used an embossing folder to add a little bit of embossed color. So that would work as well. Now this might make everybody sad because I get the feeling it's going to, you know, well, it looks good. I thought it was going to cover way more of the flowers, but it doesn't. It just makes them peek out from underneath. Okay, so luckily I stole from work some new foam squares. I was down to my last couple. This is all I have left of my foam squares. That's it right there. So I have a new box, so we're good, good to go. We've got more of those coming in. We have so much stuff coming in. Um, we have, we tried to time our shipments to not go to the old place and to go to the new place. So Tom didn't have to drag all the pallets inside and then drag them back outside and put them on a truck and then drag them back inside again. So you'll see a few things still out of stock for two more weeks, and then you'll start to see stuff really coming in stock. So I hope that makes sense. Lisa, you make all five by seven cards. Oh, Helen makes them too. Okay, a lot of you make five by sevens. Okay, well, that's good to know. All right, I will definitely give that a lot of thought. All right, so that's gonna go right in the center there. Ooh, popped it up. Okay, and why am I so far away? Let me get closer so you guys can see this card closer. And let me hold it so the lighting's better. So there's my finished card with four minutes of this live to spare. So what do you guys think? Black magic, isn't that fun? It's so pretty and it's so easy. I mean, you got anybody can do this. You guys are gonna do great with this. All right, so there we go. Very good, that was fun. That was fun, fun, fun. All right, so let's go over to my front shot. And I will take pictures of this card and I'll make sure I post them again in our Facebook group and over on our community tab on our YouTube channel, my YouTube channel. All right. So like I said this morning, you know, I was looking in the mirror and I looked in the mirror and my expression was like, no, <laughs> no. I put a headband on. I put my sunglasses on put my hood over my head and I went to work like that. I just didn't feel like. I looked presentable and it was really bothering me. And I thought about it and I found a perfect quote because we all feel that way. We all have those days where we just look in the mirror and we go, nope, there's not much in these drawers in my makeup bag that's going to help what's going on here today. Um, but I found this great quote and it really made me think and it really put things in perspective. So the quote is, it's heartbreaking that we look at the stars and the moon and the sky thinking, wow, God made that. But then we stand in front of a mirror and say, ugh, as if God didn't make us too. So that's my quote for tonight. I hope that that resonates with some of you and makes you feel beautiful because you are, you are beautiful. Um, I'll be back on Thursday at lunchtime for another fun stamp and chat live. In the meantime, you guys stay safe, stay healthy. I love you all so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for always being here. Mwah. I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.